Hello everyone and welcome to Conversations with JR. My name is Espirito Domingo. I'm an actor, writer, director, producer. I'm just overall creative. I'm an artist. I do so many different creative things, but acting is my main foundation. Like since I was a kid, I always loved to entertain people. Then I went to high school, joined the theater. I went to college, continued to do theater. And even out of college now, out of college, I'm still doing theater. I'm working on small projects, mm -hmm. bigger projects, and I'm always looking to grow as an as an actor. And through my acting, inspire people and and through the characters that I play, um, bring people to life, you know, bring characters to life that, you know, you only read about, but bring it to life through my acting. So I think has been something that has allowed me to grow overall as a person as well. So today I'm very honored to have Miss JR next to me. She is wonderful. She's a writer, um, singer, blogger, teacher, motivational speaker. She does a lot of creative work and I'm just honored to have you here today. And we would like to know more about you. Who is JR? Who is JR Floyd? And let us know. <laughs> well, who is JR Floyd? He called me Miss. Y'all heard that. <laughs> um, JR. Um, who is JR? So, um, if it, if this is your first time viewing and you haven't been following a conversation with JR, I'm just gonna say again that I am taking a page out of Michelle Obama's book in becoming and who I am now, JR Floyd has been a journey of learning and exploring. Mm -hmm. Conversations with JR was uh, created out of frustration a couple of years ago, about three, four years ago, created out of frustration because I had hit a wall and um, I had to break off an engagement. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting on the couch one day and I was just having this conversation with myself about this relationship and how I felt that I had failed again uh, in a relationship. So I just started thinking that if I am feeling that way about myself, and if I'm sitting around having this conversation with myself, think about how many other people out there are feeling the same way. And I wanted to create something that was meaningful, mm -hmm. that have purpose. And I want to take my, take my life in a different direction and do something that was uh, more meaningful and more challenging um, for me. So that's how the whole, you know, part of conversations with J.R. Floyd uh, was created. Wow. That's wonderful. And what, speaking of conversations with J.R., what inspired you to come up with conversations with J.R.? I know, you know, conversations with J.R. is, it's, it has a nice tune to it. You know, it's like almost something brand, you can brand it. It's a brand. It is a brand. It's my yeah. brand. That's yes. who I am. Conversations it's a brand. with JR. Well, you know, back, way back from when I first started, and you're still with me, and it's just wonderful <laughs> that you're still with me. You did the first interview with me when I first came out with The Waiting Game, I believe mm -hmm. in 2015, somewhere along that line, when I came out with The Waiting Game, and you were the first person to um, give me my interview, and the mm -hmm. person, Jennifer Springer, who was interviewing me at that time, we were trying to figure out, you know, what are we going to call you on mm -hmm. camera? What are we going to call you on camera? <laughs> she didn't like Miss Floyd and neither did I. So she says, I'm just going to call you JR. Mm -hmm. And it's stuck with me ever since. And I love it. Thank you, Jennifer Springer. And I love it. The conversation part, again, like I said, um, just came into it um, a couple of years ago. What I did was I, um, I had a play. Mm -hmm. I had a play called The Conversation with JR from City College. And um, it won an award. Wow. And I just kept that. And so I feel like it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Conversations with JR was just meant to be because that conversation part was always there with me. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what what made you want to become a writer? I know you're a writer. Um, oh, and we have The Waiting Game. You wrote The Waiting Game and A Different Favor of Love, who both are. Currently available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. right? Currently available on Amazon ebooks. You can um, download them. So they're very much uh, currently involved. Yes. So, what made you want to become a writer? What inspired you? What? Where's your inspiration? Want to become a writer? When you did know, you know you want to become a writer? You know, someone else asked me that question many years ago, and there was no knowing. <laughs> there was no no no. <laughs> 
the reason why I said there was no knowing. You already knew that you wanted to be an actor, right? It's, yes. it's in you. It's, I've seen yeah. him. Oh yeah. my God. So it's in you. You already knew that. Yeah. See, my plan was I want to become a New York City public school teacher. I am in education, <sighs> New York City public school teacher. I want to work that 20 years, mm -hmm. get my pension, and ride off into the sunset. <laughs> that was the plan. But there were people around me who were inspired by mm -hmm. some of the things that I was writing, some of the poetry that I was writing at the time. And there were, it started with the blog. And I said, okay, I'll, do, I'll go ahead and do this blog. And then it started from other various different aspects of my life. So not knowing that I had this creativity with inside of me, especially when I, when I wrote the, um, the waiting game, mm -hmm. the waiting game was, because of a lot of frustration that I was having with relationships. And I wanted to write about those myths mm -hmm. that keep people in this dysfunctional relationships. Mm -hmm. So there was no knowing. <laughs> it just started happening and I just kept going with the flow. And you wrote these two books and I know you wrote, you have other books on the way. Um, where, where would you say like you get your ideas from for your books? Like what, what do you, what, what, what do you pull from? I know it's in, you got as as I'm an artist myself, so like I know that you gotta go inside yourself, but yeah. you also can't just just be inside yourself. There's stuff that you know you, that can help you from yes. externally. So yes. What what Absolutely. would you say you know allows you to find those ideas to get those ideas? What a lot of ideas, ideas that I write about, especially in a different flavor of love. Mm -hmm. A lot of the ideas that I write about is true to life and happening true to life, especially with a, a different flavor of love. Um, the characters in A Different Flavor of Love kind of shaped themselves and I kind of went along with the mm. ride and they kind of developed into the, the plot and the setting and everything. So I kind of went along with the ride. Um, when I'm blogging, it's everyday life. Everything that people are talking about, every issue that people are talking about when I am blogging about life issues. I really want people to pay attention mm -hmm. to what is going on around them in the world for example when we first last year went on lockdown mm -hmm. i mean really locked down i spent seven weeks in this apartment seven to eight weeks in this apartment every single money going live on facebook to encourage people i have a dialogue every single monday to encourage people because i know at that point people were in a lot of emotional distress oh, yeah. financially distressed the world was in a chaos people were glued mm -hmm. to their tvs and i just wanted to give people a chance to hear something different mm -hmm. so i want to encourage them and that's when i developed wi and what's important now so mm. my ideas come from the world Everything that's going and, on and comes from the world. Yeah. Conversations that I hear, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, some I know you you love writing. And what would you what would you say is your is you know, um, is your writing process like? You know what what what's it like a day in the life of of Jr. in terms of um, writing is concerned. How do you you know go through that process? What's your process like? I don't really. I don't really, I don't really consider myself to have a process, but I do take a page from my one of uh, my greatest mentors, uh, Toni Morrison. Mm -hmm. um, she said that she wrote an hour each day because that's something that she did for herself. Mm -hmm. After she did everything for, for everyone else, she did that. So I try to do that each day, but my process is different every day. Mm -hmm. I don't use the same formula every day. I'm grateful for Google Docs because I could be on the train <laughs> and I'm just getting it out. But I don't have a real structure mm -hmm. that I do follow. But I do have to, I do feel that I need to be doing something cre creative every single day. It's like it pulls on me. It really, and I have to pay attention to that pull. Mm -hmm. So it like pulls on me. I have a little book with me or I'm on Google Docs or I write on anything that I have to keep that idea mm -hmm. flowing. So it's not really a formula or structured schedule that mm -hmm. I have. I really don't. And some people say that writing, speaking of writing, like it's, it's a, some people say that, you know, it's a, it's a healing process. It's something yeah. that you do I see you like, like <laughs> okay. it's, not, it's not a healing process. It's a healing. Some people say it's a healing process. It's something that you do to deal with things that you're going through. It sort of gets you to kind of release the tension, I guess. But I don't know. Do you think that's true? It's acting a healing process. 
They don't act. They don't. Be, they don't act <laughs> actors that is it a healing process, you know? Um, but no, for me, I hear that a lot. Yeah. And someone asked me that question many years ago, especially yeah. with the waiting game. Yeah. And some of the stuff that I blog about, and I do put a lot of my personal experiences out there when I go live and I'm talking to people. Mm -hmm. um, no, it wasn't. None of this was a healing process. What I, the process of healing and the journey that I always speak to people about that I am going through right now had nothing to do with with being creative. Mm -hmm. My healing process is because I am a survivor of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. That as a young child, I witnessed a lot of abuse. Uh, um, I would, I, um, experienced a lot of emotional trauma, um, healing from a lot of dysfunctional relationships, a lot of dysfunctional relationships and just healing from being battered by life and not understanding how to handle certain things like, because I did not have that foundation and I did not have the support. Mm -hmm. So my healing is being taken care of by the professionals. Um, yes, I am in therapy. Mm -hmm. I truly believe in it. Um, I have a wonderful support system, great friends. I do yoga, meditation. I read a lot of self-help books. So that part of healing, I'm taking care of that part of healing. What I do for conversations with JR, that's creativity. I am connecting to this creativity, this creative side of me that I did not even know that was there. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying that. Because if I had to enjoy that healing process, I wouldn't be right now. <laughs> I wouldn't be talking to nobody. And that's true. Like, you know, that stuff is dark. Yeah, you're right about that. Like, even for me, being an actor, you know, it's it's but it's not like it's a it's a healing process, you know. It's a creative process. Yes. It's something that you you do creatively because you, you know you're finding ideas. You're finding you know, um, and it and it pulls at you. Yeah. To me, it's like it pulls at you. It it, it like it calls to you. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that that was there. Mm -hmm. But what happened was because of the the healing process, mm -hmm. because I'm getting clarity in my life. Mm -hmm. The creative process is. It's calling me, it's pulling at me, and it's there, and mm -hmm. I'm answering the call, and I'm having a whole <laughs> lot of fun. <laughs> um, so going back to writing, what when I know the characters, right? Do you have a lot of characters in your stories that you tell? So where are those where do you where do you find the inspiration for those characters? What's the process of, of creating those characters and the stories that you're telling? The, the stories, where are you, where is the stories, where are the stories coming from? What's the inspiration behind this? It's, it's about the message that I want my audience to learn. Mm. A lot of my books, the first, I would say the first three, the waiting game is about relationship mess mm -hmm. that destroy people. And this is the reason why we have so much ugliness in relationships, mm. because we are misguided in society. I'm not an expert, but mm. I have experience. That book is written out of experience, mm -hmm. not out of anger. Um, a Different Flavor of Love, also, if you, when you read this, it's based on real life. You know, my character, Desiree Hancock, young a single mother mm -hmm. living alone, abandoned by her own mother, trying to bring herself up out of the muck that she is in. Mm -hmm. That could be anybody's story. That could be anybody's journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she finds love mm -hmm. in this very unexpected place. Oh, yeah. That's why it's called a different flavor of love. So that's that's an everyday story that I want people to open their eyes and open their heart and realize that, you know, love could be right there. But because it, it's not what you think it looked like or feel like, you will turn it away. My next book that's coming out, The 90 Day of, of Reflection, Discovery, and mm -hmm. that I'm the only character in that book. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's me. Again, life experiences. Mm -hmm. And what I have learned about life experiences and how I reorganize my life and refocus my life after starting from ground zero and losing everything. So the, yeah, that's that's what that and then the conversation that's also coming out this year. That's just a collection of all of my writings and words mm -hmm. and poetry and short stories. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted them to see a different side of Jr. Wonderful. Um, what where 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 can we expect from from Jr. What what are the some of the the new 
um projects that, that you have coming up um i know you've just listed a few but are there more that you you know do you do you see yourself what do you see yourself say in five years ten years in terms of your creativity your work as a writer you still start wearing awards like of course <laughs> oh, what come on walking that red carpet boy come on what you talking about the world is not working nothing exactly. uh, where i see myself now because we're going through this pandemic yeah. is yeah. that i'm taking conversations with jr out on the road mm. you know you know and just only a few people know because you can't tell everybody your vision yeah. okay you can't um you cannot tell everybody you your vision no. you know i am destined to be on ted talk Yes. I am destined to be on TED Talk. Yes. I am taking conversations mm -hmm. with JR mm -hmm. on the road. We're mm -hmm. going to TED Talk. Mm -hmm. When this pandemic is really under control, maybe 2022, yeah. when it's really under control, I'm hitting the road. I'm going out on stage. I'm going to hit platforms mm -hmm. and I am going out there. So that's what you can expect for conversations with uh, JR. Hitting the road more guests i'm going to have more guests later on this year on this show i am just going to plug away and continue to write books but that's the voice mm -hmm. of going out there on the road and of course eventually it's coming soon they just don't know it <laughs> tyler perry or steve Harvey yes. is going to be yes. asking me yes. for the waiting yes. game yes. Yes. and you're going yes. to see the yes. waiting game as an hbo mm -hmm. special or you're going to see the uh, the waiting game and mm -hmm. the sequel to the waiting mm -hmm. game um, on the big screen. That's that's where I'm at right now. But right now, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm in a learning process. I'm in a research process. And I'm just going to keep writing. And I'm just going to keep speaking. And I'm just going to keep putting myself out there mm -hmm. until I can level up and elevate this to go on mm -hmm. the main stage. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. And that that's, you know, that's what you that's what you can do is, absolutely. is keep pushing, keep pushing yeah, yourself. I'm, to me. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna just keep um, you know, talking and creating things mm -hmm. and just until things open up where I can get to mm -hmm. the resources that I need. So that's where I'm gonna go. Yes, definitely. Wonderful. Keep going. Wonderful. And I know that you're a motivational speaker. What would you say to, you know, people going through, you know, the pandemic right now and everything that's oh. happening, you know, people going through mental health people going through financial struggles and you know it's just a lot going on right now with people you know, sort of healing yes, from everything that's a happening a lot of it you know find the good in something yeah and i know that you know i know that's a lot of, a hard thing to sell to people but i'm going to tell you that during this pandemic and slowing down and being shut in it was the best thing that ever happened to me i pray for the people who lost loved ones and mm -hmm. friends and jobs and industries closed down and shut down but maybe sometimes if you personalize it it gives you a chance to reboot mm -hmm. reorganize and see win what's important now yes yeah. And what's important to me right now is being true to myself, my healing process, mm -hmm. and the quality of my life. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to go back to that grind. Nah. The, that grind that mm -hmm. I had before the pandemic, mm -hmm. that grind is so over. Mm -hmm. I am I am fulfilling a lot more of my own purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say to people. If you didn't learn anything else from this pandemic about being close to your family, loving the moments that you should have loved but then you start to understand what was really mm -hmm. important the things that you can live without mm -hmm. the things that you can do without but finding true meaning finding true purpose and not wanting to go back to what we thought was normal mm -hmm. because for a lot of people i know for me that normal was not no working. it wasn't it wasn't it we was. thought it was mm -hmm. but that normal was not working because it showed us that what we can live without mm -hmm. and thanks to technology it showed everybody how to be creative mm -hmm. how to be connected mm -hmm. so you know just follow your vision follow your dream don't make it a dream make it a vision mm -hmm. and make that vision a reality exactly. i'm having fun with conversations <laughs> with jr and i'm wonderful, going to continue wonderful um in closing i'm going to say thank you yes for this thank you <laughs> i love it the spirit um, this is waiting game written by jr floyd amazon. available on amazon.com go on yes, amazon right now it. and search it you'll find it and purchase it give it a read you will love it I'll tell you that and also a different flavor of love yes. is a wonderful story Short that story. that you will also enjoy reading yes. and learning a lot from 
So yes. thank you guys for joining in. Thank you for tuning in on this wonderful interview with J.R. Floyd. Yes. And you, is that anything you want to say? Please? Listen, J.R. Floyd can be found on all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. I am asking you to join into the conversation by subscribing. Click like to my YouTube channel, Conversations with JR. You can find me on Facebook. And in the meantime, be kind to yourself and have good conversations. And I thank you for watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in.